Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a compact but powerful mini PC from GM K-Tech. It looks pretty cool too. This is the Evo X1. It's got a Ryzen AI9 HX370 processor under the hood. And we're going to take a closer look at this mini PC and see what it can do in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from GMK Tech. However, they did not review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded. All opinions are my own and no other compensation was received. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now the price point on this mini PC is a bit on the higher end. $892 at the time I'm shooting this video. Higher end mini PCs like this do command higher prices versus the lower powered devices we typically look at. So just prepare yourself for a little bit of sticker shock when you're looking at the higher end of the mini PC market. This has that Ryzen AI9 HX370 processor. It has 32 gigabytes of RAM. Unlike other mini PCs, you can't upgrade the RAM on this one. This is an AMD requirement for this chipset. So some of the other brands out there with these same processors have this same issue. It is DDR5X, LP DDR5X to be exact, 7500 megahertz RAM, so very fast memory, but it can't be upgraded later. So pick the model that has the RAM configuration you're looking for. This one again has got 32. They do have a 64 gigabyte version. You can update the storage on this though. So it does have two NVMe slots, both of them PCI Express 4. This one has a one terabyte drive already inserted, but you can add a second one in dual boot Linux or whatever else you want to do with it uh, for a maximum of eight terabytes total across two four terabyte drives. That's what it supports at least at the moment. As far as ports are concerned, you do get a good number of them. Notable is this one here in the front. This is an Oculink port. We've talked a lot about Oculink on the channel recently, uh, mostly centered around external GPUs. In fact, we tested an, a GMK Tech external GPU with this computer on a prior video. What's nice about Oculink is that you can get a little breakout board and plug in just about any desktop card into the mini PC Oculink goes right to the bus, so there's no Thunderbolt or any other kind of protocol in the way. It is a very interesting way to get expansion to a mini PC that doesn't have a lot of room for it. And again, I've done videos about some of the things you can do with that port. Additionally, you have a USB 4 port here. This is a 40 gigabit per second port. This is compatible with Thunderbolt 3, so you can use Thunderbolt GPUs on this as well. In fact, in that video, we ran both a Thunderbolt GPU and an Oculink GPU at the same time, so you can do a lot with that port here. This will also work for video output, but you've got more video outputs in the back. Here you've got two 10 gigabit per second USB-A ports, and then on the back, you've got another two USB-A port configuration, also at 10 gigabits. You have HDMI out, display port out here, so you can get a total of three displays. You also have dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet. Like other mini PCs, these are running with Intel controllers. You have your power uh, port here for the included power supply. It is a rather large one here, so it's not built in. And this is running at uh, what looks like about 120 watts. So you do have plenty of power budget here to power the processor and all the things that it can do. And here you've got a Kensington lock slot. You can slide the, cent the central section out of the metal casing here to upgrade the hard drives on the top. You can get at the screws here on the bottom. The fan on this is quite noisy, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but I do like the way it looks and you've got some RGB lighting that will poke through as well. So why don't we boot it up now and see how it performs. All right, so we are now booted up and operating. This is running with an activated version of Windows 11 Pro. GMK Tech does include Windows 11 Pro licenses on most of their mini PCs, and we will test out Linux in a little bit. It might be hard to see, but you do get some RGB lighting that will poke through the case here. It is very, very subtle. I would imagine in a darker room it might be a little more pronounced, but it does have some RGB lighting even though it's not all that visible. You can't control the lighting either. One thing to note as the computer sitting here at idle is that it doesn't consume all that much power at idle. 8.4 watts is what I was measuring out of this just a few minutes ago sitting on the Windows desktop. We'll get a look at the uh, power consumption when it's under load in a little bit. It is not a quiet PC though. Even idling here, I'm hearing the fan running. It's not very loud right now, but I do hear the whir. 
if you do anything that puts this computer under load, that fan kicks up and is quite noisy. And that's one of the challenges when you fit this much stuff running with this level of performance in a small form factor. So you will hear that fan. You'll feel the air coming out of this thing. It is very aggressive on cooling. And if you don't like noisy PCs, this one is probably not going to be for you. A little bit earlier, I did run a speed test on the Ethernet. I was seeing this out of both of them. So we're getting the kinds of speeds that you should expect out of a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapter. Like many other mini PCs though, this does struggle with Wi-Fi performance. It does have Wi-Fi 6 on board. Most of my Wi-Fi 6 devices sitting here on the desk get about 700 megabits per second down and up. And here you can see the Wi-Fi is struggling. So Wi-Fi is not strong on this. It's not strong on many of these mini PCs we look at. So if you are looking for the best throughput, I would suggest connecting it up to Ethernet. So let's take a look at some basic web browsing next. We'll go over to the NASA.gov homepage and see how fast everything springs to life here. As you can see, there is not much in the way of rendering time. As expected, this is a high-end PC and we get high-end performance out of it. So I don't think you'll have any issues doing work and other basic activities on this. And here we've got a 4K 60 frames per second video coming in from my YouTube channel. It did drop a few frames here or there, nothing significant that I would notice if I wasn't looking at the stats for nerds up there. So overall video playback from streaming sites seems to be just fine on here and on par with other mini PCs at this performance and price point. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 31.1. That puts this mini PC right where I would expect it to be based on what we've seen with recent offerings from AMD along with Intel. All right, let's take a look now at some video editing. We have DaVinci Resolve loaded up here with a 4K 60 frames per second project that came off of a smartphone. And what I'll do first is just drop in a pretty simple transition here. Maybe we'll do our usual uh, cross dissolve and see how that renders in. I found with these mini PCs that have the higher end processors that lower impact kind of video editing like you see here is pretty responsive. You don't get a lot of lag with this. You could go in and edit a video like what you might see on this YouTube channel pretty easily with one of these without having to go and get an external GPU or something more significant for a PC. But when you start doing some crazier stuff here, like doing uh, these sorts of effects and whatever, this is where you might see some lag come into play. So for example, I just hit the space bar and we're waiting for it to catch up and render. So it'll, it'll play, it'll give you the ability to edit everything, but advanced video editors will need something a little more powerful. Now, since they are billing this as an AI chip, why don't we run a little local AI and see how it performs. This is Olama. We're running with the DeepSeek 8 billion parameter model, and I will have it uh, give us a story about a powerful mini PC with a loud fan. And let's see what it comes up with here. Uh, it will chew on this for a little bit because we don't have a GPU to power things. But as you can see here, it's able to crank out some text relatively quickly. It's a little faster when you have an external GPU attached, but if you had some light work to do with a local language model, I think you could get away with that here. Note that it's not making use of the GPU or NPU on the processor, at least running Olama here with that model. This is all on the CPU right now, but all in, not bad, and it's kind of fun to play with. So let's take a look at some gaming now. This is Cyberpunk 2077. We're running this at the lowest settings at 1080p, and as you can see here, we are just under 55 frames per second, at least in the bar scene here, which isn't bad considering that we are not running with a discrete GPU. This is all on board the AMD processor's APU, if they still call it that. And once the camera here goes outside, you'll see that frame rate increasing as some of the graphical complexity declines here. So all in, this is pretty good for gaming, especially if you're looking to play some more recent games without having to go out and get yourself a GPU and everything. So I'm pretty impressed with what I'm seeing here out of Cyberpunk. Uh, we are running on a 30 frames per second capture right now, which is why you might see some screen tearing. But overall, I am pleased with what I'm seeing here graphically out of this machine. Let's take a look at something else. So here I've got No Man's Sky running at 1080p at the lowest settings, and we're able to maintain 60 frames per second most of the time. I will see a couple of hits here or there where we'll go down into the mid 50s. But by and large, it is maintaining 60 on the surface of the planet here. And typically, this is where No Man's Sky drops off when you're on the planet. 
Uh, so all in, a very playable experience, a little better than I expected. And this is a real testament to how far the graphics hardware is going on these CPUs. This is really great performance here. And I think you can get a lot of decent casual gaming done on this device. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 4,022. On this test, this AMD processor comes close to what we were seeing out of an RTX 3050 from just a year or two ago. So very good graphical performance here. You can see also how strong the CPU performance is on that test. And of course, the games seem to be running pretty nicely on here too. This is also great for emulation. So you should be able to run most of the gaming consoles of the last couple of decades here without issue. So a very nice little powerhouse here. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 99.1%. That means that under heavy sustained load, this is not significantly thermal throttling. So performance should be very consistent. The fan though will be making a lot of noise as I mentioned. So just be prepared for fan noise. It will be cranking up the minute that computer is placed under load. Power consumption under load came in at just over 100 watts on that 120 watt power supply. All right, one last thing to take a look at here and that is its Linux support. We've got the latest version of Ubuntu up here. All looks to be functioning as expected. We've got video, we've got audio, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth all seem to be detected properly. Performance also looks pretty good on here too. So we've got LibreOffice loading up here to get some work done. Firefox is in the process of loading up as well. I'm running this off of a solid state drive, so it might be a little sluggish here, but all in a pretty good Linux experience. And because you've got that extra NVMe slot on here, you could have Windows on one disk and Linux on the other to get the best of both worlds here. But all in, a very good experience here, whether you're in Windows or on the Linux side. So all in, I like what I see here. It is performing exceptionally well. It is a bit pricey, but that's what we're seeing out of this current batch of AMD mini PCs. I also like the compact case. However, I think this compact case is why the fan is so noisy. So this could have been a little larger and a little quieter, but if you are looking for something that is small and mighty, I think this one will fit the bill and you get the Oculink expansion on this too. That'll do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.